Welcome to 100 Days in Minecraft Stoneblock. It's like Skyblock, but Minecraft grabs you by the scruff of your neck and shoves you six feet underground. But without further ado, I hope you all enjoy, and let's get started. On day zero, I loaded into the world and was immediately confused by the fact that I was completely surrounded in stone. However, I tend to spend most of my life confused, so this really wasn't a big change of pace for me. But when I really started to panic was when I opened up the mod pack's quest book and discovered the immense amount of things I was going to have to complete by the time this 100 day video is over. Spoiler alert, I failed. But my goal for this video was not to complete the quest book, but to have as much fun as possible. I rarely get to play modded Minecraft, so despite my fear, I decided it was time to press on. I began by punching stone with my bare fists. Not the most ideal way to get your cardio in, but I needed to break the blocks in order to get stone pebbles. The first ingredient we were going to need to continue in the mod pack. And apparently this game rewards you for beating your hands against rock, so in doing so, I received a loot chest. I then proceeded to craft a stone crafting table, which which in turn rewarded me with yet another loot box. I then decided to open the first one where I got 12 pieces of epic bacon, a great food source, so we're not going to have to worry about hunger for quite some time. The second loot chest got me four transformer upgrades and four overclocker upgrades. I have no idea what these do, and I probably won't for the rest of this video, but it's nice to have them nonetheless. With my bacon in hand, I decided to spend a couple of minutes collecting stone pebbles to get more cobblestone. After I got enough resources, I was able to make the first tool of the series, a stone hammer. Not only was this tool going to increase our mining speed exponentially, but it was also going to enable us to get other types of blocks, including gravel, sand, dirt, and even dust. By breaking down the same blocks repeatedly, you can turn cobblestone into gravel, gravel into dirt, dirt into sand, and then sand into dust, and that is how you progress through the block system. So that's what I spent the next couple of minutes doing, and after that, I decided to expand the room a little bit. Once I was done getting myself a little bit more space, I then decided to make a crook. This is the second tool in the series, and if we use this on dirt, it will actually allow us to get tree sapling. Digging through mass amounts of dirt with essentially a stone shepherd staff to find tiny little plants isn't exactly the most thrilling way to spend your afternoon, but it needed to be done so I could complete the next quest. After receiving some more exotic items from loot chests, it was time for the first milestone of the series, placing and planting the first tree. I already know what you're thinking about this video so far. Wow, exhilarating. He placed a tree. And believe me, I felt the same way when I was recording this. But trust me when I say this was the first sign of things starting to pick up. Once I patiently waited around for a few minutes, the tree finally grew and I was able to harvest our first few pieces of wood. And this officially brought us to the end of day zero and the start of day one. We have officially survived one day in hardcore Minecraft stone block. Cause for celebration, if you ask me. But instead of celebrating, I immediately got to work and spent a good portion of day one mining out more space for us to use in our base. With all this new space, it was time that we started utilizing it. I began constructing the main crafting tables and workbenches that we were going to need to progress in Tinker's Construct. And to be honest, I was super happy to find out that this mod pack even had Tinker's Construct. It's one of my favorite mods of all time, and I'm sure you all know what it does. But if you don't, it essentially enables you to create custom tools that can do all sorts of cool things and just make your world more efficient in general. At this point, our tree had regrown, and it was time to harvest it with a crook. I was actually looking for a very specific item in the leaves called silkworms. Well, I guess... I, I, are worms, are animals considered items? Regardless, we needed these silkworms to infest the leaves of other trees so that we could actually get string. And that's how I spent the beginning of day two, sitting around watching worms wail their way through my trees and turn them white. You heard it here first, stone block silkworms are confirmed white supremacists. Oh, okay, now wait a minute. Hey, hey guys, did... Can I leave that in the video? Do you think people still understand the concept of a joke? I spent a good portion of day two collecting controversy leaves, but once I got bored with that, I went ahead and used our newly found string to help craft a new item that was actually going to help us get ores. And this thing is called a sieve. A sieve? A sieve. A scythe. We're gonna call it a Steve. Get it? Because Minecraft. I also went ahead and crafted up a oak crucible. And the way we use these things is by putting saplings and I believe possibly other leaf blocks into this. And it will create a water source for us. So day two is looking very productive. And for some reason, I randomly got the urge to open up more loot chests. And we got a diamond tier furnace, which was going to increase our burning and smelting speed by like 
to 300%. So this was a great find for us. The rest of day two, day three, and into day four was spent doing the same routine. Breaking down cobblestone, running the gravel through Steve, and then smelting the ores that we got out of it. However, a couple minutes into day four, we were running out of space, so I made a storage crate, one of the first storage upgrades that we were going to be making in this series. And although this is a relatively basic item, this gave us a ton more storage to work with so we could continue to run our greasy little fingers through Steve and see what he had to offer. Along with day five came the creation of a stone barrel, an item that was going to allow us to transform blocks into other blocks by placing them in the barrel with either lava or water. And speaking of water, it was around this time that our oak crucible finally finished producing our first water source block. After waiting around and steving for quite some time, the second source block of water was ready and we were able to create our infinite water source. Using our stone barrel, I created clay and then combined that with sand and gravel to create something called grout. Again, those of you who are familiar with Tinker's Construct will recognize the name of this item. I threw the grout into the furnace and collected seared bricks. I then used those to create a casting table, which is the first item that we were going to need in order to create a smeltery. Although there were other things I wanted to do before we actually created the rest of the smeltery, so we'll come back to this later. The rest of day five was again spent thieving and mining blocks, and on day six, I finally had collected enough diamonds from Steve to create a diamond hammer. Yet another great upgrade for us to increase our mining speed. And naturally, with a higher mining speed comes an even higher rate of items and ore flying into our inventory. And despite how boring this may seem to you, I was actually having a blast at this point. Gaining items and progressing through the world, basically through auto-clicking and AFKing, was a brand new way to play Minecraft that I had never tried before. And not only did I find it fun, but the repetitiveness was actually pretty therapeutic for me, so I was enjoying it. Along came day seven, and it was time that we made an item called an Auto Steve, and believe it or not, when we placed it down, there was literally a miniature Steve on the inside of it. So we couldn't have picked a more perfect name. But in placing it down, I discovered that absolutely nothing was going to happen and it needed a power source. So while we had created the item, we were going to have to come back to making it work later. In the meantime, on day eight, it was time to take some porcelain clay that we just made and turn it into a crucible. Now this type of crucible is actually how we're going to be getting our lava source blocks. What we can do is put cobblestone into the crucible and set it atop a heat source. The very beginning tier heat source is actually a torch. So although it'll heat very slowly, what will end up happening is the torch will eventually melt down the cobblestone in the crucible and create a lava source. And once we have that lava source, we can then take it, put it under the crucible, and we have an even better heat source, and we can get lava faster, and so on and so forth, and just keep evolving from there. It's a relatively simple item, but it actually allows us to do a lot of stuff. I also opened up another loot chest, and we actually got a black bow tie, which is pretty cool. You can't really see it when I'm wearing armor, but... For the rest of the series, I think I'm gonna wear it. There's nothing wrong with mining in style. And with lots more steving and mining through day nine, that brought us into day 10, another milestone here in the series. 10 days survived in hardcore Minecraft. We haven't really had anything that was trying to kill us yet for say, but it's an achievement nonetheless. Not only was day 10 a milestone, but it was the day we started to create our first automated process. We needed something to give power to the auto Steve, so while I was figuring that out, I figured why not make it so that we can automatically break blocks that will automatically go into the sieve that'll automatically go into the chest. That was a mouthful. But I managed to figure it out and I'm pretty proud of myself for doing this without any tutorials and basically just looking through the game. Again, I am a very simple person, so creating big things like this that aren't just strictly laid out for me is considered cause for celebration. But I put our Steve above our chest, connected with a hopper, another hopper on top of that, followed by an auto hammer, which then has a cobblestone generator filtering into it. Then all that was left to do was place down a furnace generator with two 
Gladstone flux ducts to conduct power. And once we threw some coal into the system, the furnace powered on and we started to collect items automatically. It was a very slow rate, but it was cool. And that's all I really cared about. Plus, this was going to allow us to venture out and do other things while this auto Steve was steving for us. And we do improve on this system later in the video, so don't worry about that. At this point, our lava was done generating in our crucible, and it was time to collect and take it over to the smeltery that I've been working on. It's a basic smeltery for now, but it'll get the job done and help us to create new ores and generate new tools for Tinker's Construct. I spent the rest of day 10 and all the way into day 12 creating a brand new pickaxe using our smeltery. I went ahead and melted down some iron, making it a liquid so that I could turn it into a tool rod, a pickaxe head, and an iron binding to create a new iron pickaxe. I then added the diamond modifier so we could mine blocks that were at the diamond tier, and I went ahead and threw on some redstone to increase the rate at which we can mine. And even though this pickaxe took a long time to make and has two modifiers, it's still considered a beginner's pickaxe for Tinker's Construct. So we will be making a better one down the road, but this is going to help us out a lot for the time being. Now this got me thinking, getting tools is one thing, but enchanting them is something completely different. Eventually we were going to need an enchanting station, but before we could even think about creating books in the actual enchantment table itself, we were going to need a consistent source of experience. So I spent day 13 creating a mob farm. By the end of the day after quite a bit of mining, a few hiccups, and close encounters with dangerous mobs, the mob farm was semi-complete. It basically it was a big dark room that spawned mobs, and although we risked our life every time we went in there, for now it would be alright and a decent source of experience. On day 14, I received something called a growth crystal, a tier 2 growth crystal to be specific. Uh, this is technically a water source block, or rather a block that acts as a water source, but it actually increases the rate at which crops can be grown. So I went ahead, threw this in the ground, and decided to get a little farm started. We were going to have to get crops and make a farm at some point, I mean we can't rely on shoveling a rainbow color meat down our throats for the foreseeable future, so. On day 15, not much happened. Oh, except the fact that, you know, I basically created an infinite source of wood, leaves, and sticks. It's not really a big deal or anything, but I did this, in case you were wondering, using a hopping bonsai pot. Basically, you place a piece of dirt and some sort of sapling into this little pot, and as the tree grows, it breaks down all of the items and throws them into a chest. Infinite wood, successful, happy, it's a good day. 15 moving on. Day 16 brought along the discovery of one of the coolest items in the game if you ask me, a diamond wand, which is basically an item that allows you to place multiple blocks at once, which is going to help us with building and taking things that just, this is just going to help us so much, so we're going to be making a lot of diamond wands in the future. And remember how earlier I said we were going to improve on the auto steving system? Yeah, it was time to get that done. I went ahead and created a magmatic generator, which was going to be our new source of power for the machine. Along with this, I made a couple more crucibles to increase our flow of lava. I took a snack break to eat some cooked apples. Another great thing about the hopping bonsai pot is that it produces apples, which can actually be cooked, which gives us more hunger bars than a cooked piece of steak, which is crazy. But basically, we're never going to need to worry about food again. And after our snack break, we got back to work on the machine. And what I did was I hooked up a cobblestone generator that would automatically feed cobblestone through item pipes into the crucibles, which would then be melted down into lava, filtered through liquid pipes, and into the magmatic generator, so we would have a constant source of power going into our auto Steve. Which basically means this thing will completely run on its own now, without us having to interact with it at all. We don't even have to touch it, we don't have to put coal into it to do anything, it is completely self-sustaining and we can leave it alone. And once again, I figured all this out by myself, it's not really that big of a deal. Please save your applause for the end of the video. After refining the auto Steve process, Process, this brought us into day 19 where I was able to continue working on the mob farm. Now that we had items being automatically generated for us, I could focus on expanding our base. In addition to making improvements on the mob farm and just generally making sure it was safer than it was before, I also decided to carve out an observation platform above the rest of our base that we could use for storage and other kinds of adventures. And it was at this point that I actually got a knock on my door. Knock knock who's there. It's day 20. We've survived another 10 
seven days in hardcore Minecraft stone block. And it was on this day that I built some stairs to get us up to our observation platform and added some oak fences to make this place look a little bit more lived in. But as soon as I was done, I realized that, hey, this looks kind of ugly. So we will be taking this down and replacing it later in the video. It was on day 22 that I discovered our new heat source that we were going to use to create lava under our crucibles. And not only was this going to look cooler, but it was going to create lava much faster. And this block is actually called Yalorium. It sounds and looks like something straight out of Star Wars, so that made me even more joyous. I also got rid of most of our oak fences and created a little outcut in the stone below the above observation deck. I used this area to store most of our Tinker's Construct items, and I also created a 3x3 three three of Steve so that we could Steve by hand. And although we had our auto Steve running and it was producing items, we had reached a point in the game on day 22 where we were starting to create more complicated blocks. And that was going to require us to get items in bulk, so although, again, the auto Steve was running, we did have to do some more work by hand in order to keep up with the blocks that we wanted to create. After creating a fluid tank to collect some extra lava for the future and collecting some obsidian from our stone barrel, I was able to create a nether portal and we were going to be able to finally leave our stone Stony Coffin. And let me tell you something, the Nether in Hardcore, especially modded Hardcore, is incredibly scary, although I did run into some nice Nether chickens. On day 25, after exploring the Nether, doing some mining and some general base maintenance by keeping up with all the items that we were producing, I created an open area filled with dirt, which I then converted into grass using grass seeds, and placed some bait down to get some actual mob spawning. Our hostile mob farm was also in full swing by the time Time day 26 rolled around so not only were we getting constant experience but we were also getting loot bags which we were then opening and finding all kinds of new and exotic items that were helping us to progress through the world. Also at this point in the video I'm aware that I'm skipping over large amounts of time but to be honest with you guys a lot of this mod pack was very repetitive. Most of the stuff that I'm doing off camera is just AFK work. Sitting at the Steve sifting through sand and dirt and gravel, standing around swinging my sword at the mob farm, or replanting crops and beginning the process of breeding animals. So in the time that I cut, you're really not missing much. Speaking of loot bags, one of them actually held an air charm, which is an item that was basically going to allow us to fly, which is absolutely insane. Although its usage is limited, so we wouldn't have it forever, it was definitely going to be a huge buff. And I used this air charm to navigate the nether in search of quartz. I planned on having a ton of quartz all over the base to make it look like a lab, but once again, just like the oak fences, I discovered that not only did it not look good on the floor, but there was actually a better block I could use. Are you picking up on a pattern here? I am too. I've made lots of mistakes throughout this process. But the item that I decided to replace the quartz with on the floor was actually white stained concrete. I had forgotten that this item was even in the game at this point. We are in 1.12.2. And not only did this block look better and give us more of the lab aesthetic that we were looking for, but apparently it also gives you a speed buff when you walk on it in this mod pack, which is just absolutely fantastic, because now we can pretty much just sprint around our base and get to everything we need so much quicker. By the time we were done placing white concrete all over our lab floor, it was day 28, and I decided that it was time to actually wall off another section of the base by placing glass everywhere. This is completely unnecessary and possibly a colossal waste of time, but I figured it would be cool to have a section of the base cut off so that we could observe our animals through a glass shield. Again, completely unnecessary, but I think it looks cool. And just like that, once again, I was getting another knock at my door. Knock, knock, who's there? Guess what? It's still not Jesus, but it is day 30. And despite God still refusing to show up at my doorstep and help out, I decided to still be a good Samaritan, and I used most of day 30 to expand the pen that I was keeping the animals in so they could have a little bit more freedom. Day 31 was spent steving through Netherrack, not something I I ever thought I would see myself doing, but there was one essential item that I needed to get out of the crushed netherrack, and that was cobalt. I said I wanted to improve our mining tools earlier in the video, and I wasn't playing around. We're going to be using cobalt as the base ore to get us our new tools. And just look how satisfying it is to see that gorgeous, gorgeous blue liquid spilling out of our smeltery. Good 
God, is that satisfying. And once we had our brand new tools, I spent all the way into day 35 digging out a giant box, a new expansion area of the base. And believe it or not, yes, I actually had a plan for this. This is where our new auto-steving machine is going to go. And even though the auto-steve was already doing everything we needed it to do, I wanted to create a system where we could automatically create gravel, dirt, sand, dust, and be able to get every single item that we get out of steving through all those different blocks and transfer them into an automatic storage system. It was a tall order and I spent a lot of time working on it, but as you'll see through the rest of the video, it is definitely worth it. And as much as I would like to say I did all of this because I like exploring, challenging my brain, and creating the most efficient item filters in the game that are possible, it's I'm lazy and I just I just want these things to do it for me I'm just I'm just lazy but as you can see our small singular auto Steve is working its butt off as it is now so getting items in bulk like this at an even larger scale was definitely an exciting concept to me by the time it was day 37 we were officially able to begin the process of building the ultimate Stever I had made a bunch of auto hammers and auto Steves as well as a water mill which was going to be our primary primary source of energy to actually power this entire thing. I then began laying down the blocks as well as all the pipes that were going to connect them to each other to make this system run. And I have to be honest, creating this auto system in this mod pack is the most fun I've had in Minecraft in years. Don't get me wrong, I love playing vanilla Minecraft and that is what I play most of the time, aside from my survival series on the better Minecraft mod pack, which I highly suggest you go check out after you watch this video if you want to see more mod content from me or just more Minecraft content from me in general, but getting back into heavily intricate and complicated modded Minecraft like this was such a breath of fresh air I can't even express it enough. With day 40 having passed and us currently being on day 41, the beginning part of this auto system was complete. We had all of our auto hammers that were crushing down blocks into gravel, dirt, sand, and dust and having them perfectly organized. As of right now, this part of the process was running like a well-oiled machine. Machine. But now I had to prepare for the next part of the machine, and this was going to be the section that actually collects all the different types of items that we receive from gravel, sand, dirt, and dust, and puts them into the automated sorting system. In order to make sure that the items filtered properly, I needed to get at least one of every possible item that was going to be going through our output. And this process took me all the way into day 45. We had to spend quite a bit of time steving through all those blocks. But once we were finished with that, we could begin placing down the rest of the auto hammers and the auto steves and get it wired up to the system. And it just so happens that this part of the machine was going to be almost twice as big as I was expecting it to be, so I also had to clear out a bunch more space to make room for the rest of the blocks. And that air charm that we collected earlier in the video from a loot bag was once again coming in handy. It was so much easier to just be able to fly around and place blocks rather than having to stack blocks on top of each other to tower up and then go back and have to break them down, it was just saving us a lot of time. After clearing out some more stone to make the rest of the lab even and flat, I then went ahead and created a drawer controller. This was the main machine that was going to help us sort our items into our storage drawers. I went ahead and placed it down on our observation platform and then took some basic drawers and put it around the storage controller itself. After that, I went ahead and placed one of every single item into the drawers to make sure that it filtered properly. After that, I hooked up all the item cables and then created a maintenance tunnel for the item cables to run through directly into the back of the storage controller. The last thing I had to do was hook up a couple more magmatic generators and attach those to some crucibles that had eulorium blocks under them and then hook those up to cobblestone generators to get this thing a constant source of power. And again, working with all this cabling and all these unique blocks was just so fun to me. I can't express to you what a great time this was. And by the time I was done, this thing was looking absolutely awesome. And I'm pretty impressed with the fact that we are not even halfway to day 100 yet, and we already have a source of automatic items that's going to produce almost everything we could possibly need for the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, I started to notice a pretty big issue. This machine was not producing items at the rate I needed to. In fact, it was barely producing items at all, so I had to figure out what the problem was. 
was. I decided to start by checking out some speed upgrades. I went ahead and crafted them and threw them into the magmatic generators. But in order to use these at their full effect, I also needed to create more power. So I transferred the water mill to a new, more ideal location to hopefully improve on the process. I also created a second water mill and that really seemed to help with our power output. Even after this episode is done and recorded, I'm still not really sure how grid power works exactly. So although I was never able to really fine tune the process, I was able to increase production. And speaking of production, I needed a way to quickly increase the rate at which we were able to make white concrete. So I got to work and grabbed all the items that I was going to need to make a hydrator. This is a block that was going to do the transformation from powdered concrete to regular concrete automatically without us really having to do anything at all. We simply fill it up with water, make sure it's plugged into a power source, and then throw in our concrete. And honestly, I have to say, I'm really glad that I don't have to do this block transformation by hand anymore. My wrists were already tired as is, and not for the reasons that you're thinking of. Was that a sex joke in a Minecraft video? I think that was a sex joke in a Minecraft video. Is my channel even going to be up anymore by the time this is over? But with our hydrator ready for use, I went ahead and I added it to the wall that the rest of the machine was on and started to cover it with white concrete. And by the time we were done with this, day 50 had arrived and this area was looking like a proper lab. And although I covered up the front part of the machine with white concrete, I didn't want to completely hide all of the wiring and cable work that we had done. So over on the side by our observation platform, I went ahead and created a nice big window for us to look through. Or at least it was going to be a window. Right now it's just a giant hole. But I also made the discovery that by putting glass into our smeltery and then melting it down and pouring it out into casting basins, we could get something called clear glass. And clear glass is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's glass without all the little textures on it so that you can see through it more easily. So this is what I decided to use for any more windows and looking through peaky hole glasses that we make in the rest of the base. I also wanted to quickly upgrade our tools, that being my cobalt hammer and my cobalt pickaxe. The tool handles themselves were actually originally made of paper. The reason for that was that I got an extra modifier, but honestly, I didn't need the extra modifier and dark blue pickaxes and hammers looked a lot cooler than white ones in my opinion, so I went ahead and replaced the paper with cobalt. By that point, our hydrator had created some white concrete for us, so I also began to finish filling in the floor of the lab. And bam, with a quick jump cut, the floor of the lab is finished. It is now day 52, and we officially have a speedy way to walk around our base. Again, I can't stress enough how awesome it is that white concrete just gives us a speed buff. I don't know why it is this block specifically, but but I'm not complaining. It really is the most convenient thing that the block I somehow randomly chose to be the floor of my base is a block that gives us a speed buff. Are we sure this video isn't scripted? I also filled in the floor of the observation deck and began to place in some of the walls. I wasn't ready to tackle all of the walls in the entire base, so I started with the small steving area that we have underneath the observation platform. However, something weird was happening. After I was done working on the wall area underneath the observation platform, I went over and checked the cables that was connecting our auto steves to the sorting system. And when I right clicked on them, I noticed that the items weren't actually moving through the cables. It was like they were being jammed. So the first thing I thought I would try was to have the cables filter in the chest first before they then went together and flowed into the item sorting system. But that still wasn't the problem. So I went ahead and took out a bunch of cabling and eventually I discovered that in order for the items to actually go into the system, for some reason they need to go into the front of the drawer controller. So all I really had to do was take out the drawer controller, turn it around, and plug the cables back in. And just like that, the items started to flow into our storage area. It was a problem with a very simple solution, but it took up a lot of my time and bamboozled me for quite a while. But with that problem fixed, I can officially say that our auto steving and auto sorting machine was complete and working at 100%. I said earlier in the video that I didn't really have a main goal, but I did have one. I wanted to get automated items as quickly as possible without us having to do anything. That way, if I ever decide to continue this series in a second 100 days video, 
Hint, hint, make sure you subscribe to youtube.com slash NT for more 100 days content in Stoneblock Minecraft. We would have everything already set and ready to go. I also made a little entrance leading into a second maintenance tunnel in the back behind the sorting machine. That way, if we ever needed to place any items into the sorting machine manually, we could have easy access to the storage controller. I spent the next couple of days collecting more white concrete and filling in the walls to the lab to make it all look clean and pristine. But other than that, not much happened. Again, this mod pack was very repetitive. I'm skipping over these large amounts of time because they are, again, mainly spent AFKing, waiting for blocks to finish processing, and just generally getting items by standing around and clicking. One thing that was really bothering me were the oak stairs that we had leading up to the observation platform. This was a lab, and having wooden stairs on the floor didn't make any sense, so I went ahead and made some aluminum stairs. And I think these definitely match the aesthetic of the base much better. And now that we had so much open space in this area, it was starting to get pretty dark at the top in the ceiling. So what I did was I took some of the glowstone that we were getting from our auto Steve, and I turned that into some ceiling lights that I placed throughout the top of the base. Again, not only does this contribute to the lab aesthetic, but it's also just generally helping to light up the area so that we can see our builds much better. At this point, day 60 was fast approaching, and our lab base was looking absolutely fantastic. We had our smeltery, a great auto steving system, a bunch of hopping bonsai pots collecting wood, an automated storage system, and our animals were beginning to breed. It's crazy to think that all of this came from punching stone. But after reveling in the majesty of our base, it was time to get back to work. Since a lot of time had passed, our air charm had kind of worn off and broke. But I discovered I really liked how it felt to be able to fly around, so I wanted to try to create an angel ring. This item was going to allow us to fly utilizing grid power, basically like we're in creative mode. However, this was a relatively difficult item to get, so over the next couple of days, I'm going to be working on collecting this item in between other projects. I started with moving and expanding our smeltery, building it upwards so that we could have more space and more room to smelt more ores. This really didn't serve that much of a purpose other than making sure we had more room to bulk smelt items, but it was going to speed up the smelting process, so I figured it was worth it. Plus, having a really tall smeltery with a bunch of pipes coming out of it looked cool, so why not? I also wanted to be able to get an enchanting station, and in order to do that, I was going to need books. And to get books, I was going to need cows. And in order to breed more cows, I was going to need a lot of wheat. So I started digging out another room behind our animal farms to make a crop farm. I started placing down a raised platforms of dirt and then used iron trap doors with redstone torches under them to create the outline and the things that were going to hold the dirt in place. Kind of like big pots. I am really starting to get my Breaking Bad on with this whole lab theme. Because of the speedy efforts of our new and improved smeltery, we were getting clear glass at an even better rate. So I figured it would be a good idea to replace the regular glass we had looking into the animal farm with the clear glass. This way, the base matches and all the glass types are the same same and it's not different textures everywhere, it'll just look cleaner in general. Again, completely unnecessary, largely a waste of time as was most of what I did in the, the, f th throughout this series, yep, but it looks cool so we're gonna do it. Okay, seriously, who is writing these scripts? Oh yeah, that's right, we don't have a script. Sorry, just the fact that I'm a literal man-child and incapable of adulting and planning things out beforehand completely slipped my mind. That's alright, thank you. And it was on day 64 that much like in real life, I began to get very lonely, so I decided I needed a little friend. And this came in the form of a hat that was also a T-Rex. So this little guy is going to chill on top of my head for the rest of the video. If any of you want to name him, feel free to go ahead and list it down in the comments. I'll pick one and throw a name tag on it. I don't even know if I can do that. We'll just, his unofficial name will be whatever you guys want. So just pick it out. I'm too lazy to do it myself. On day 68, I once again began upgrading our mob farm. I placed a bunch of vector plates around in a certain pattern that would force all of the mobs that spawned into the center of the spawning platform itself into something called a mob crusher. And this this essentially would break down all of the mobs and kill them brutally and violently as the name Mob Crusher implies. So not only was this a good way to receive items such as bones and ender pearls, but this was essentially a source that was going to give us an infinite amount of loot bags. Which loot bags were pretty much the sole way we got any big game exotic items that I've gotten throughout this series. I'm sure you guys have noticed the god apples in my inventory every once in a while. And there's really only one way to get items of that tier and 
it is through loot bags, so having constant access to them is going to be game changing. And on day 69, <laughs> and on day 70, wait, hold on a sec. Was that another sex joke in a Minecraft video? I think that was another sex joke in a Minecraft video. I can't wait to try to tell the YouTube algorithm that this video is for kids. On day 69 and into day 70, we finished our crop farm and we also upgraded some of our storage. We were getting a ton of items from the auto Steve and our storage system was working. It was sorting things the way it was supposed to. But there are hundreds of other items in this game that aren't produced strictly through steving, so we were going to need a place to put them. I opened up a little hole in the wall on the left side of our observation platform and created some crystal chests. And this chest mod is one of my all-time favorite Minecraft mods. I think they're so cool to look at and fun to use. We were now getting all the crops, animals, and items that we would ever need, and we were getting them at such a fast rate that I started to get a little bored. So bored, in fact, that I literally decided to start breeding chickens. Yes, you heard me correctly. This mod pack has a system of advanced breeding mechanics for chickens. But they just look so cute sitting in their little coops. I can't stand it. Now, if you remember a few minutes ago in the video, I said I wanted to make the angel ring so that we could fly around basically like in creative mode. However, one of the items that we need to get the angel ring is some sort of squid ring. And an essential item that we need to create that are ink sacs. So after doing a little bit of research, I discovered that squid spawn below a certain Y level. So I dug down off of the main base and decided to make a giant pool basically for squids to spawn. It wasn't very efficient, but that's not the point. It didn't need to be. It worked perfectly fine. Squids started spawning and I was able to get the ink sacs that were required. Now, one of the most difficult and scary things I've ever had to do in hardcore Minecraft was collect this next item. It was basically a lasso that I had to use to capture a ghast. And although it took me a long time and I nearly died a few times, I eventually caught it. And this was the last thing we needed to create the angel ring. So I got home and went ahead and crafted it. I also very quickly and enchanted my diamond armor, so it was nice to have that little extra layer of protection. Again, it's not really a big deal, and I normally wouldn't do this playing modded Minecraft, but it is hardcore, so better safe than sorry. But once I had the actual angel ring equipped, I realized I really couldn't get off the ground. The angel ring itself actually runs on grid power, which was something that I had forgotten about, and we were not producing enough power to get ourselves to fly. So I spent quite a while creating more water mills and placing them down, so that we finally had enough power to get off the ground and be able to fly like creative mode. Now at this point in the game, it was day 77, and I had already accomplished everything that I wanted to for this mod pack. We had an automatic ore and item farm, we had a smeltery, we had an auto tree farm, we had all the animals we were ever going to need, a hostile mob farm, a squid farm, a crop farm, and an auto storage system. Plus, not to mention, we were literally flying, so there's that too. But although I had accomplished everything I wanted to, we still had 30 days left in this 100 days let's play. And Despite everything we had accomplished, there was one thing that we hadn't gotten to yet that I was very interested in, and that was getting access to a dimension called the Deep Dark. Now, this dimension is one of the most difficult and dangerous places that you could go in hardcore Minecraft. And the way you create the portal is by compressing millions and millions of pieces of cobblestone. So that's what I spent the next 30 days doing, sitting around doing nothing but compressing cobblestone. And it was during that time that we hit day 100. And man, oh man, was I relieved that we had done it. Don't get me wrong, I had a ton of fun doing this video, but it was so much work. I would love to continue to make big long videos like this, but being the small channel that I am, I'm very afraid to invest this much time into a video again. So let me know you all enjoyed it by giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. It's a free and easy way to help support small creators like myself, and it's a great way for you to get consistent free content. So if we can get this video to 1000 likes, I'll start working on a Minecraft Hardcore Stone Block Part 2 where we venture into the deep dark. I have plans to build a huge interdimensional mining base, so it would be really cool if we could get to continue the series. But if you stuck around to the end of the video, I want to thank you so much for your support, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day, and take care.